just aside from what we have here, I just wanted to talk a little bit about intentional community because sure. I know that you've had some experience oh, yeah. with that. And um, you know, your current household, you said, is, is six. You know, right. what what do you find in your experience you know, over the years, the things that you've gone through, the places you've lived, the people you've been with? What would you? What kind of advice would you give to people who envision the utopia farm? You know, there's so many people who do. What do you? What are, what are your thoughts on that? Well, my th my thoughts and offerings. Um, I, I I hesitate to give advice really because you know, ultimately, uh, the the best intention advice is still someone else's perspective. You know, and you really have to come to your own place. But the best offerings that I can give about those who envision a, a utopian polyamorous family and community, you know, is is to find the right people first. You know, find people whose heart is really in it. You know, not people who are being dragged along kicking and screaming. You know, not people who say, "Well, I don't really like it, but I'll see if I can, I can you know, learn to live with it." You know, um, it's not really me. You, you can't build a community based on people whose heart really isn't in it. You know, um, and and people whose heart aren't in it. That doesn't mean that they're not wonderful people, and that you can't love them very dearly. But um, to put yourself into a position of creating a community or family requires commitment, requires dedication. You know, it requires devotion, and you can really only offer that stuff if your heart is really in it. So you really have to know yourself, and you have to be really honest with yourself and with the, with you, those you love. And you have to have, I believe, a, a concept where the foundation of, of love is that level of real naked honesty, you know, with each person you're there. You know, and if you meet somebody else that you think is absolutely wonderful and you can be completely in love with them, well, that alone just isn't quite good enough if you're going to forge a community and family. You know, everybody else there has to feel that way too. And they have to feel that way with everybody else, you know. Uh, we have, we created our concept of the Ravenheart family is a line marriage um, in which it wasn't a requirement that everybody has to marry everybody else, you know, as long as somebody's plugged in. But but in fact, it's got internal loops, you know, and it's it's sort of, we kind of like to, to if we try to diagram, it look like a molecular diagram, you know, like one of those benzene rings with attached <laughs> stuff. And many of our respective lovers are attached at one point or another to one of the atoms of the molecule. and, and um, you know, and, and some of the people, and some of the members of our family are only attached at one point. But the, it's a solid molecule, you know, in its own way. And you, you want to try to make room for that. You have to reach everybody's comfort level. Because if, if people aren't comfortable and they're not happy, they're not going to want to do it. You know? and, and to do that, you just really have to be honest and talk about things, even if they're painful things, even if they're difficult things, even if they're things like, well, you know, I really don't like this. Or I really don't like you, or I really don't like what what you did, or what's happening to me, or I feel really left out when, when you and her are, are having your old thing because you guys are so intense. Or, well, you may be absolutely mad about this person and she's really got it going there, but you know, I'm not entirely comfortable with that person in that relationship, you know, and I know you're not going to see it because you were blinded by pheromones and that's okay. Enjoy it. Get your full, you know, NRE out of it, new relationship energy, NRE, yeah, out of it. And do the bit, and you'll have my blessings. But um, I can't really go with you on this one, you know. And really don't want to live with this person. Living with people, no matter who it is, you know, is another whole level of involvement. You know, and you can live with people as roommates, you know, who you're not lovers with, and you can have lovers that you just can't live with, you know. And, but they have both. They have two people that are your lovers and living with, you know, and making a commitment to have a life and 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 stuff together to. To create a community, or to buy a, a, a ranch, or a home, or to have a family business together. Wow, you know that that's that's a lot of levels of stuff, you know, on, on many different places, and, and, and many of them are emotional, and some of them are pragmatic, you know, just simple pragmatics. Do you guys like the same kind of furniture? Do you like to watch the same kind of TV shows? Are you going to fight about what you're going to watch on TV today? You know, <laughs> um, you know, you, you got to find ways of making that work. You know? One of the things that we've really valued and we've found is important, I guess, is that everybody in our family has to have their own private bedroom. Right. They really do, you know, and they may share it continually with somebody, but actually in our case people rotate around a lot, you know. Um, 
and in most of us require an, a private office space. Now it can be the same room, you know, that has a desk and a computer and, right. and a bed, you know, and all this stuff, or maybe a couple of small rooms, you know, one for each, whatever it takes. As it's turned out, I I don't actually have a private bedroom, but I have a uh, uh, you know a fold-up futon in my office, which I needed a lot more that I can use if I need it, you know. And we have a spare room that we can make available for company and stuff that I can use if I have a night alone, which I don't have very often because you know I've got other women who invite me to come and have a night with them, and we kind of have our date nights and we try to make them special. You know, we'll, and we'll do something special, you know, it's at, at our night. We'll have, you know, dinner, we'll go out to a movie, you know, have a wild sex. I mean, whatever we want to, gives us the most enjoyment of having a date night. And that's kind of neat because it makes every night something special, in a sense, you know. It's not just the same old, same old. Although sometimes a date night is nothing more than staying home and watching TV while everybody else goes out to a movie you don't really want to see. You know? <laughs> or having a night alone where you stay up all night and read. Or, or, in Morning Glory's case, stay up all night and watch Discovery Channel and work on a sculpture where <laughs> she doesn't have to answer the phone or worry about anything else, you know, and, or pay much attention to what's going on in the show, and, and she can just, you know, get a project done with complete focus. You have to make room for everybody, I guess, to be. You know. But, you know, there's nothing different about any of these things than it would be true for having a relationship with one person, right. really. I mean, it's just more of it, that's all. I, I kind of feel that, in essence, the rules, as Morning Glory articulated, and, and, and the lessons we've learned and the ways of trying to do and the answers we give to these questions apply equally well to relationships with only one other person. Yeah, that's <laughs> one of the wrong reasons to get involved is because you really can't do a one-person relationship, so you figure maybe if you got a lot of them, you can somehow dilute it down to a place where you can handle it. Right. <laughs> right. Ah. No. No, that does not <laughs> that work. That is not going to work.